Cool, awesome. Uh, thanks to uh, everyone that's attending this. So this is kind of what we've been doing almost every KubeCon where we have our technical oversight committee uh, gathered here to basically uh, show that there are human people that you could talk to um, and you know answer your questions. Um, I'll have them all go through a brief um, introduction of themselves. Uh, my name is Chris Anizik. I have the fun job of being CTO of the organization, but these are the folks that actually do uh, a ton of the actual uh, work in ensuring that we cultivate and accept archive uh, projects. So maybe we'll start left, my left to right. So Richie, you have a microphone? Yeah, we'll go that. Go I do on. not. Oh, it even works. It's better than yeah. the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Richie. Um, I work at Grafana. I sit on the TOC. I sit on the governing board. Uh, I'm a Prometheus team member, Open Telemetry member. Yep. Uh, hi, sorry. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikita. I work at VMware, uh, CNCF TOC. I'm also a KubeCon chair, co chair this time, and I work on Kubernetes. My name is Emily Fox. Oh, sorry, I've been talking a lot today. My name is Emily Fox. I work for Red Hat. I'm the chair of the Technical Oversight Committee. Um, I was where Nikita was earlier with KubeCon, so I'm emeritus. Good, thank you. Um, and I do a lot of stuff in open source, so you see me in a lot of ecosystems, and I'm boring, but here. Hi, I'm Matt Farina. I work for SUSE on Ranger. I'm also a Helm maintainer, Artifact Hub maintainer. Uh, I do a bunch of stuff around the CNCF. Uh, hi, I'm Ricardo. I'm a computer engineer at CERN. I work on the um, Kubernetes and machine learning platforms, and I'm, I think it's the third year in the TOC now. Um, hi, I'm Justin Cormack. I'm the CTO at Docker, and, 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 the, and the microphone's not on. Sorry, I'm Justin Cormack. I'm the CTO at Docker. Um, been involved with CNCF for a long time. Used to, um, was involved in setting up tag security and um, Generally, we, we, you know, we've we've contributed a lot of projects to CNCF at Docker, and it's a very important part of the work we do and the ecosystem community. Hey, I'm Duffy Cooley. I'm um, the field CTO at Isovalent. I've been involved in Kubernetes since about 1.6, and I'm also a CNCF ambassador. So I'm glad to be here talking to all of you. Yeah, <laughs> Hi, I'm Erin Boyd. I work for Red Hat. I've been in the CNCF since the jump. Um, I was one of the original chairs to SIG Storage. And I'm um, just pleased to meet you all and see how to get you all more involved. And I'm going to close the round. Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Gamanje. I'm currently a senior field engineer at Apple. I am focusing on exploring open source technologies, especially within the cloud native space. Uh, I've been with the TOC for three years. I'm closing my term in March next year. So if you'd like to be a TOC, please keep your eyes open. We're going to have the elections happening in December. I'm just going to do this as well, <laughs> straight on. <laughs> so you'll have a chance to be here in front of uh, everyone as well. Um, I have been collaborating with many projects in the ecosystem. I am the creator of the Cloud Native Fundamentals course as well. So if you have any questions in regards to how to get involved in Cloud Native or where to get the right resources, please reach out. Awesome, thank you very much. So generally the way we've run these things is, uh, you know, we do kind of a brief like, hey, here's how the CNCF works, because a lot of people sometimes still get confused. Then I generally ask these lovely folks a couple of questions to start things off and then kind of open it up everything to the floor for people to ask questions, interact with folks. So to kind of do our usual thing, you know, CNCF, we really have three kind of main, um, you know, bodies that kind of rule the organization. First is the governing board, very simple. These are the folks that basically control, you know, the budget. Um, you have the TOC, which is uh, mostly situated here. They control the overall technical, uh, you know, vision, you know, uh, which projects get in or out uh, of the organization. Um, and then you have the end user community uh, and a really new, newly booted end user tab, a technical advisory board that's going to work with all these folks. So these are kind of the three pillars of CNCF. Uh, they're all kind of independent, but they closely uh, work, work together, um, you know, at, at the end of the day. So tags, um, these are a bit of a um, not too new of a structure, but, uh, you know, they've kind of really grown and evolved over, uh, you know, the last 12 months, in my opinion, we have tags that are usually dedicated to a specific area, t network, security, storage, contributor, you know, strategy, uh, environmental sustainability. These are kind of the core areas where if you're ever interested, uh, we are going to have TOC elections coming up pretty 
pretty soon. Getting involved in a tag is basically the gateway to kind of really get involved, I think, with the TOC uh, long term. And I highly recommend participating there first uh, and then joining TOC meetings, which are all open uh, to the public um, anyway. Um, I, I will always shamelessly use an excuse to pitch a new landscape that we're going to be coming out with soon, but the whole purpose of this exercise is to show everyone here that we as an organization have kind of grown kind of quite significantly. The TOC has grown a little bit historically, but we have basically 100, should be 175 projects, but uh, that are under the purview uh, of, you know, these. We've had a lot of, you know, graduations, you know, audits that we've done and, and so on. So the organization kind of continues to grow and you kind of have this body of 11 total people that really help kind of steward and manage uh, these projects. So if you're kind of interested and want to play with something new, check it out. It's got a lot more data uh, in it and it's something that the TOC itself and we have Dave that show up will introduce them pretty quick. No worries. That's okay. Perfect. We 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 had quorum, we had quorum already, so we were pretty good. But it's good to good to have you join. Um, so um, you know, uh, Dave, how about you say a quick quick hello about who you are and your background? Uh, I'm Dave. I'm a principal engineer on the platform team at Spotify, and I do uh, I also work a lot with Backstage. Awesome. I'm gonna give the mic back to Katie. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, one thing people always ask, we don't really get, get to it. If you want to propose uh, a project, we've done a lot of work kind of make this a little bit easier. There's been a, an evolved sandbox project, sandbox uh, project process uh, that we have that you could just go to sandbox at CNCFO, apply very kind of a little bit more straightforward. Uh, generally, we do recommend uh, if you want to bring a project to CNCF, please work with the respective tag uh, and kind of work with them to kind of give you feedback uh, before you maybe generally uh, apply. That's going to be the better approach, in my opinion, before going directly uh, to the to the TOC. Uh, all of this stuff is also being very much tracked now in public in a, in a project board that you get to. Uh, and of course, there's a process of going through incubation, graduation, and so on, but I'm not going to dive in uh, too much there, uh, but given how much uh, value valuable time uh, we have today. In terms of process, uh, you know, we have a lot a lot of kind of sandbox projects that have kind of come in this year in a variety of different categories. You could kind of see that the focus really, I think, is kind of what we buck, we call app delivery, but that's, you know, such a large bucket that covers so many things, but it's kind of more higher level, you know, up the stack related projects, um, things like networking, maybe a little bit of possible. A little bit less popular these days because we basically have you know so many different you know uh, let's call it CNIs and service meshes and in, in CNCF uh, already. But you know this is kind of an idea of what you could see of what kind of has happened so far this year. Um, and you know really we're all here to open up and ask questions to the TOC in terms of um, you know what's on their mind and and so on. So I think the the first question I will throw out there to um, the TOC is so you know we've kind of evolved the tags you know quite a bit and you know we got a lot of them now uh, do you think we have all the ones that we necessarily need do any changes that we need to kind of involve because you know I think there's some kind of lessons learned we've had in the in the past let's call it year especially uh, yeah I, it's, it's it's kind of you know we we had this discussion um, in our last meeting, and I think I, mean, they, I think there's a whole bunch of areas that are missing. I mean, like where's tag performance? For example, is one of my questions. Like, but performance of cloud native code is something that's actually very different from performance of kind of other kinds of code. And there's lots of you know properties of the cloud that are actually very different. It's you know things tend to be kind of high bandwidth, high latency, and very parallelizable, which is a kind of interesting characteristic that's different from um, running, you know, code, you know, previously. And people need help in building high performance code. Um, you know, we have, we have people like CERN who have mm -hmm. big performance, um, cloud native performance issues, you know, really interesting. So that's, I think there's a whole bunch of areas that we, we don't have. So it's a good question, Chris. Thank yep. you for asking. Yep. As you can see, we do have strong opinions about yep. this. Um, but quite frankly, we've had our tags for a long period of time. CNCF has been around for eight years. The question comes up often is the tag health. How are they doing? How are they performing? Are they engaging with projects? Are projects engaging back with tags? Do we have the right ones, to Justin's point? This is a lot of conversation that's been ongoing dialogue. We want to ensure that we're setting up technical advisory groups for success, so ensuring we have momentum 
contributors that are interested and individuals that are capable and interested in leading these groups is essential for that success to happen. But also, we've started asking questions about what is the intent of the tags? What do we look to them to get out of our projects? Or what do we look to them to do to advance a particular domain area? Several of our tags reach out to projects and openly invite them to join the CNCF and apply for Sandbox or apply at incubation. In other cases, they reach out to pro projects to understand where are you having some difficulty in this particular domain area or for tag contributor strategy? How do we help you get more contributors? What, how do we improve your governance to ensure that your maintainers are set up for success? These are all questions that we have to consider when we explore adding new tags or even removing tags that may be inactive because the ecosystem has moved beyond that need. And it's important that when we have these conversations that we're considerate that it's okay for change to happen. We just need to ensure that we're documenting the process, being very transparent in the decision making, and allowing people to reskill into these new areas. Awesome. I'll have two more questions before I open it up to the audience. So the, the one always that comes up is like, what is missing in, in CNCF, right? You know, we kind of discussed this a little bit earlier today. If you look at the landscape currently, the only, let's call it a category or subcategory that doesn't really have an incubating or graduated project right now is continuous optimization, right? But we have an open cost in the sandbox and Arguably, you could say Cloud Custodian also does a bit of, of, of continuous optimization. So I'm kind of curious from the, the TOC's point of view, like, have we filled all of our little little boxes yet? What is what is Mr. <laughs> Richie's hand immediately goes up? Okay. Uh, a vault replacement would be nice. A replacement for vault would be nice. This is the obvious one. We don't have very many developer tools projects. We've, you know, historically we've been quite ops focused, and but we've we started having a few, and we got little bits of them. And but like, how how should developers work with cloud native is you know a really important area that we don't have a strong story in yet. And you know, I, I think it goes up with developers platform engineering. Right, we've got a little bit there, and. It's probably just scraping the space is where we're at right now. We're just kind of touching it. And so I think there's definitely space to just expand around developer platforms. Yeah, and I think to add on to that, which Dave is probably the best person to speak to it is, like, what are we doing day two and day three beyond? Like, we built this huge, massive, complex ecosystem with 174 projects yeah. in it. And how are we actually managing those effectively to provide the resiliency that we expect? And, you know, it's great to see projects like Backstage come into the ecosystem that aren't necessarily Kubernetes focused. Because I know a lot of people who've been here for a long time, you know, if it, was the, the, if it wasn't Kubernetes, it, it didn't matter. And I think we're really seeing it evolve out beyond that of, you know, what are we providing in terms of value to the cloud native ecosystem and just not to the Kubernetes ecosystem, so. Uh, another thing I think I've, you all probably already seen on the KubeCon keynote stage has been AI. And I was just talking to Chris about this no this morning is maybe we have a, like AI related tools in the cloud native landscape. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing for me is the boxes themselves, like, we may have filled the boxes we have, but I think the other point about the landscape is it existed long enough that like, are they even the right boxes? I mean, we might have a random box that doesn't have, that isn't filled like continuous optimization, but the fact that like half the projects are coming into app delivery probably means that it's just the wrong boxes. And if we were to look at the, what the, I want to use the word landscape, but I shouldn't. If we look at like the ecosystem today and we were to cut it up in a way that makes sense, would that or would that not look like the boxes we have on the landscape? And if it doesn't, we probably then have empty boxes and then we should have a conversation. And the vault conversation comes up at every KubeCon. Uh, a bunch of us talk about developer experience and not necessarily like each individual project, but like what is the developer experience across the ecosystem? Because I think many of the projects have a really good operator experience or a really good like day zero experience, but what you do after that, what you do once, whether it's day two things or just as a developer that doesn't care about the clusters but only cares about their service or doesn't care about the entire network, just cares about their packets, like those sorts of things I think we're still not doing great on. I don't know where that lives on the landscape because I don't think we have a box for that, but that's a thing that I think we're missing. Just going to say, because we were discussing this earlier as well in another session, but as we look at how the boxes should look like, it's also time to review the projects to see which ones don't make sense anymore. 
to basically make space for for the new things. There's there's uh, there's potential to add new areas, but maybe some other areas don't make sense anymore at all, or individual projects, so it's time kind of to review all of this. And I think I would like to conclude that our landscape is always evolving to the point that the TOC recently actually updated the technical vision for the CNCF and the definition. So that means that what we envisaged the ecosystem to look like five years ago, eight years ago, is completely changed. So this stage, when we're looking into the bigger picture and the perspective, what we're missing is all of these big initiatives around AI. Last year, it was all, everything around WebAssembly. The previous year, it was a boom for security. So you can see these projects that are emerging, and they're definitely, some of them have a right, CNCF is the right space for them to develop and grow. And I think for us, it is important to create that space where these projects can come, but at the same time for the communities to grow and engage with those uh, projects as well. So, and another thing that I would like to mention is like, I would like to see definitely a better developer experience us going up the stack and simplifying the way we adopt things. Um, I would definitely love to see more um, engagements and initiatives around sustainability as well. We talked about it, but it's not about talking. We actually have to do things about it, like increase the maturity of our projects. So we had Kepler that was recently included into Sandbox in September. We had the Keda Carbon Aware Operator as well, um, that was developed by, uh, I think it's Microsoft and Red Hat, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we have all these initiatives, and at this stage, they are very initial level as well. So what we need to do is to actually increase the maturity for these projects, and we have the tags for that. But I think it's, uh, it's not just about the projects that we're missing, it's about the people that we're missing that will continue their engagement and enthusiasm for, for these initiatives. Oh. Definitely one of the things that's interesting to me about the about the CNCF and, and the scope of, of what we consider to be projects that should be included when we're looking out there and trying to see like what are things what are the gaps in, in what we're building here. It's interesting it's an interesting challenge to continually modify the scope of what could be interesting, right? Like today it's pretty easy to look at that landscape and understand the categories in which we're focused. But tomorrow that world is changing. Like we think about WASM, we think about WebAssembly, we think about lots of other tools that are out there. And it, it's a really interesting thing that this continues to evolve in that way. I was not saying like everyone answered. That was awesome. Um, so uh, maybe one kind of final, final funny question before we open up to the audiences. So, uh, you know, heard WebAssembly mentioned, you know, a few times by folks. We have a bunch of projects kind of that are using it. We have some run times. Uh, you know, is WebAssembly going to replace containers? Is it peanut butter and jelly? Either or. I'm kind of looking at Justin here maybe to say something, but um, kind of, you know, what are your thoughts on kind of the, the role of, you know, WebAssembly in the cloud native uh, ecosystem? Justin. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, WebAssembly is kind of interesting because it's it's got a lot of the same properties as, you know, as containers. It's, it's a it's a sandbox, um, you know, we, people want to de deploy it in the same kinds of way. Um, it's got this enough of the same properties. And w one of the things that we want, you know, we don't, that we've learned a whole lot of things in the cloud native ecosystem about how we want to build things and how we want to deploy things and how we want to run things. And we're not going to kind of throw these, th these learnings away just because we've, we change a part of the stack. We're going to we're going to evolve, and so um, you know, we do, immutable deployment is one of the things that we persuaded people with containers was a good idea, and it's been it's incredibly valuable for a lot of reasons. And we want to do the same thing with with Wasm because it's like that. That's we don't want to just go back and do things the way we used to do them because it's a new ecosystem, um, and so and you know and things like. Orchestration is really important, and like how we how we put up, you know, how we build applications is is a kind of long running thing. You know, microservices and and containers kind of grew up together because they fit organizationally as well as technically, um, and so I think the, these these things are all, all kind of going to you know evolve, and we're going to always be trying new things, but we're going to also be learning from from what we've built already in what we've built in the ecosystem and we're going to reuse components and use different components to do the same thing and so on. Yeah, you know, to add to that on WebAssembly, I think um, when we're doing cloud native stuff with containers, 
there are a lot of places where we've run into shortcomings, places where things just we wish they could be better. And WebAssembly, while it was developed for the browser, we quickly found that there are places in these cloud native spaces, it does things really well. And so now we're figuring out how to orchestrate it and use it and integrate it. And I think that the practical use cases are really good here because there are some things that it just excels at where containers wrapping things in like a Linux container don't work well, where we can shrink things down, make things work a little bit more cross-platform. And WebAssembly, I think, brings some more of that promise. And so it'll play really nicely in complementing containers for some of our, our tougher use cases. I've seen some recent uh, some recent innovations around this where um, WebAssembly became implementable as a container runtime, and that means that you could actually run it next to the existing stuff that you that you have running. Right, you could have your existing containers running, and you have your WebAssembly could your WebAssembly instances running kind of all in the same pod, even, which is I think really highlights the um, for me it highlights the value of everything else we've built in this ecosystem because like. The autumn, you know, all of the work that we've done around improving observability without actually having to instrument things, the ability to have network security and container security would still all apply pretty clearly to those other, to these new targets, right? So there's tons of, to your point, like we're not, we're not like throwing anything away. We're just taking what we've learned and applying it to in, in interesting new ways to new technologies. Supporting more. That's what it really is. Containers have been around for a while, but we all know our organizations do more than just containers. They've got virtual machines, they've got data centers, they've got cloud. Some of them have all of those things and then some other stuff that I don't even know about. So WebAssembly is just another tool for our adopters to be able to meet their goals and objectives. And it's the intent of the cloud native ecosystem to enable that as much as possible within the definition. I was just gonna go a bit outside was as well. Um, there was the AI and HPC day on Monday. There was a presentation showing some limitations that we know exist with containers, but become really relevant when we start talking about very large uh, model serving and things like this, which is the way we told people to structure their containers uh, was to optimize them, be immutable. But suddenly we have a use case where a lot of the data at runtime will come from elsewhere. So how do we integrate that? We're not talking about just containers. We're talking about a lot of external data that has to be integrated at runtime. And we didn't design the system from scratch to do this kind of thing. So we kind of have to rethink a bit how will we integrate these new use cases. And I think I can close the remarks here. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, this year, we actually had the first BosmCom, which happened in September. So definitely, if you're interested in, in this particular initiative, do check it out. I think Chris is going to be a great person to talk to about the next iteration. Happy and to. then we have the, uh, the section on the landscape, which is focused on WASM tooling as well. So you'll be able to identify those as well. I think these are the starting points for people who would like to get involved more. And a WASM working group. Yeah. Yes. And Claude need a WASM day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think... Um, we have uh, probably, I think, 15 minutes or so maybe to questions from the audience. So anyone want to ask questions to these esteemed set of folks? Uh oh, is that <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Oh, here you go. Oh. I will make it very easy. Uh, uh, hi, friends. Uh, long time no see. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, happy to see you. Um, so I want to. I want you to look backwards and count your wins. In the last year, what has what this TOC been able to accomplish? Um, especially because the organization is growing so much. And you know, frame the wins in terms of scalability as well, please. Thank you. No pressure. <laughs> so having, I think Matt and I both been involved since the very beginning of the CNCF when we even named Sandbox. And I would say, like, I think this year we have really, with Emily leading the charge, created a more consistent process by which we want to operate with a lot of community input. Um, and um, realizing we're just 11 people with full-time jobs and that we can't do it all. And so how do we do better? How do we serve the community and what they need better? And so part of that is, uh, documenting what we expect out of ourselves as TOC members and our time and contributions, and then working our way down the stack. 
So, you know, one of the things that we'll be talking about, there's a proposal out is like, how do we leverage our tags better? We have these subject matter experts in each one of these fields, and sometimes we don't have that representation on the TOC where we should. So how, how are we delegating out and preparing our tags to be better involved in the process for consistency sake? And how are we taking the feedback from the community? So I think that's a huge win because we haven't had a lot of stuff written down and every time we would switch a TOC, it was a little bit different depending on, you know, what people thought was important. So I think that in and of itself is going to create a better foundation as we move forward and elect new people with the elections as they will know what's expected. They will know what they're supposed to be doing. They will understand how they interact with the community and the tags and the processes are more defined. And um, to Katie's point is, you know, looking back, oh, should we redefine what we are? We've evolved. Um, and so, you know, taking that time to really reevaluate what our charter is and what we stand for, I think, is, is pretty huge in, as far as it goes. And then just recognizing we can say no. I think that's a huge thing for the TOC. For a long time, we said yes because we were trying to grow the ecosystem, and now we recognize we should say no. We should help projects archive. Um, we know that things end. So I think we've just come to a point in our maturity curve that we're we're finally in a good steady state. Yeah. Sure, you know, I, I was really thinking of three things um, that have come to mind here. Uh, first, uh, a year ago, we announced the new sandbox process when we were at KubeCon, and we've been in it. And I think I find this process to be easier to manage as a TOC member, to go through things, to get the uh, better information and everything surrounding that. So I think that's a win for scalability and working through the process. Another thing that we've done more recently is how we do annual updates for sandbox processes or projects. It used to be a bit intensive and a bit of work. And we were working to automate that and help it scale while still give us the signals when, hey, the sandbox project is in trouble, go look at it. Or, hey, the sandbox process, you know, project, it might be ready for incubation. We're automating a lot of that to give us those signals. It's kind of the push method rather than the pull method to give us some more bandwidth. And so I think that's another win for scalability. And then another thing that we're in flight on right now is going through all of the processes that we've got. Some of them, they haven't been updated in years. And how do we update those things and rethink them to help them scale and then work with those around us to make the people problem scale? Because there's 11 of us and we can only do so much. So how do we get all these other contributors to help us? And how do we automate as much as we can? So where we do invest, it's high value, and we're working on that now. And so I think there's gonna be more wins come next year out of this effort. I also have three things to add. Uh, so first one was to just to add on to what Erin said. We've been trying to delegate to tags as much as possible. Uh, so we've talked about sandbox annual reviews, but when sandbox applications come in, uh, it's been really hard for us to review all of them. And the TOC aren't, like, not everyone on the TOC has domain expertise on it, like every specific aspect. So we've been pinging tags on each of the, whenever a sandbox issue, uh, whenever a project creates an issue on the sandbox repo, we've been pinging tags and they present at the tag meetings and then we get specific feedback from the tags before we make decisions. So that's one thing that's definitely helping with the application process. Uh, the other one, just to part improve participation in the tags. We also introduced a CNCF Taggy Award at KubeCon this time. Um, and we're planning to do more efforts in recognizing contributors in tags. And uh, third one is a shout out to Emily for project boards. So like, uh, uh, we have project boards, shiny new project boards in the TOC report. Why don't you talk about it? Uh, so I'll make this real quick. Uh, there was a lack of transparency in where projects were at in the TOC, who was doing what, where things are at. We're fixing that. We now have a new projects board. You can see all the projects that applied to move levels. They're there. We try to keep them up to date with their status. Same thing with sandbox applications. There's a sandbox board there. But there's a lot of other issues, and the TOC is starting to operate more like an open source project. We want to create issues. We want to have discussions out in the open as much as possible. Then you should be able to see where we're focused, what it is that we're doing, where we're engaged. And you can check those out on the TOC repo. It's under the beta boards. We have get voting. That's oh, a, yeah, that too. That's a, a yeah. big share. And, and we had an offsite, which I thought was really helpful as well. Ooh. I'm just going to say one thing. I think having Emily as TOC chair has been the difference, because we've historically been overwhelmed and had nine people or 11 people, or it doesn't matter. But 
we've always done our best to stay afloat. And I think what Emily has done is challenged all of that and said that we need to have sustainable processes. We need to document things. We need to be transparent. We need to not say, okay, I'll just do this on a night or a weekend or whatever because I'm behind. We need to actually fix the problem. Awesome. I was going to add one more, which is not related to the TOC, but there, there were tasks that the TOC felt we should be doing that are now delegated. So the creation of the end user technical advisory board was actually a huge achievement and a lot of work from a lot of people during this year. And it will really delegate some of the roles that were given to the TOC and, and kind of ease the work of the TOC members as well. Awesome. We have, we have, oh. We have time for one more question, so we might as well let uh, the gentleman who's been standing there graciously uh, ask it. So. Yeah, I have a question. So there are a lot of projects outside the CNCF. Um, Keycloak was a good example that jumped into incubation earlier this year, right? So if you had the opportunity to go shopping and bring some projects in, what kind of projects would you be bringing in? So, someone mentioned the vault fork. That vault was... fork. <laughs> or something like vault. Anything, something to fill that space of vault. That's my contribution to this. Do you have time for one more yeah, question? Yeah, we do. Right. We do. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a question. By the way, I've been pretty involved with Tech Network, so I enjoy the sandbox uh, review and try to add GitHub from the feedback on the Tech Network mm -hmm. projects. The question I have is there are so much hypes around AI in this conference and also within the CNCF community. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are the goals or what are the thoughts the TOC have and how can we get more involved uh, in activities related to AI? I just want to pick your brain on that. Thank so, you all. Let me start. There is an AIML working group in Tag Observability and Tag Runtime. If you're interested in this topic on AI workload enablement and cloud native architectures, as well as AI injection with cloud native projects, so ensuring that they can leverage that capabilities, that's the working group to go to. It's brand new, a lot of discussions happening. There's an AI hub where some of that was going on with an unconference that's been pulled into the meeting notes stock associated with that and some other ideas going on in that space. So definitely check out the tag observability, tag runtime, that working group. If you can't find your people on that topic, let us know in the TOC public channel or tag chairs channel. We'll figure out where we should be putting those conversations. Uh, we have tag observability and tag runtime people. Can you just raise your hand so that people know who to watch out for? Okay. And I think we'll probably wrap up, but yeah, by, by the way, I think we're totally in another hype cycle for some of us who are, uh, you know, old enough and been around the block. This is just like, all right, like, here we go, we, and then trough at disillusionment and back to normal. And we're, we're going to have probably a year of this on, on the AI side, because that's where the marketing dollars are unfortunately going. So um, with about a minute or, or so left, I kind of want to thank everyone here for, for, for their time. Uh, please feel that you know everyone is accessible here. Join TOC meetings. They're open. Um, we're, we're totally willing to get more folks involved. We are going to be holding elections soon. So if you're curious um, about how to get involved in that, let us know. We'll have a public blog post pretty soon. But um, we'd be excited to get new, fresh uh, faces involved uh, with this community. And come be a part of it. Come join the public meeting. Come be a part of a tag. Come work your way up and be up, and be up here like us. There's nothing between you and it but air and opportunity. That's exactly right. And we need more contributors in the ecosystem. If you're not familiar with any of the projects, go join a tag of an area of interest for you. They would love to see you show up, help pitch in, and maybe we, I'll be here in the audience asking you one day, where, where's Cloud Native heading next? Cool. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So thanks.